This week marked a year since the first ever US-North Korea summit, a meeting that was billed as a breakthrough and a real signal of intent by both parties. But doubts surfaced in the aftermath of that Singapore summit, and more so since we saw that follow-up meeting in Hanoi between President Donald Trump and North Korean Chairman Kim Jong-un. So where are we at now? I'm Alex Jensen for Korea Now. The situation may be summed up by the North Korean embassy in Singapore's decision to postpone an event that had been due to celebrate the anniversary of the Trump-Kim summit this week. Invitations had been sent out before an email the night before said the event was being postponed for unforeseen reasons. The US embassy is understood to have had no plans to join the event even if it had gone ahead and it doesn't seem like much of a stretch to suggest all's not well. The North's state media demanded this past Tuesday that the US withdraw its hostile policy or else the agreement reached in Singapore last year is at risk of becoming a blank sheet of paper. The statement cautioned there is a limit to Pyongyang's patience. And this was just the latest in a series of warnings from North Korea since the breakdown of talks in Hanoi in February. You may recall Chairman Kim gave Washington until the end of the year to change its stance. Remember, the Singapore summit saw both Trump and Kim agree to work towards complete denuclearization and peace, albeit without clear details or a timeline. But even aside from recent short-range launches, the North's first missile test in 18 months, Pyongyang has been possibly expanding rather than shrinking its nuclear weapons program. Within days of last June's Singapore summit, the US Monitor 38 North detected signs that North Korea was rapidly improving its nuclear research facility. There were reports also of North Korea increasing production of nuclear weapon fuel and raising uranium enrichment. By August, a UN report stated the North was still developing its nuclear program against sanctions. That said, Pyongyang is only pushing the US to a point, and leading analysts suggest the aim is to stay in Trump's thinking and to pressure some change in Washington's calculus. Certainly, Trump and Kim have been very careful not to directly upset each other. The US president insisted again this week he and Kim have a very good relationship and that he got a letter from the North Korean leader on Monday. Trump said he thinks something will happen that's going to be very positive. It is the first known correspondence of its kind since the two men's summit in Vietnam and they appear willing to hold another meeting, but not unless one or the other is willing to compromise. American officials keep stressing their goal to completely denuclearize North Korea without offering sanctions relief until that has been achieved. The North, for its part, wants a step-by-step -step approach with concessions offered by both sides. Part of the disconnect is probably because of a power imbalance, but mainly it appears there's still not enough trust. The Trump-Kim dialogue process has been back to front, a top-down approach that's left finer details until after big proclamations. At least dialogue has been kept alive though, because neither side is ready to give up yet. Trump has clearly set himself up as the president who has ended the North's nuclear threat before he actually has, while Kim probably realizes that Trump's unconventional presidency may be his best chance of sanctions relief and possibly more down the line. We can think back to before Singapore when there was a real threat of conflict and we can still say that the very fact there was a first US-North Korea summit remains hugely significant. History might remember it as a breakthrough, but with a year now gone since Singapore, we also dare to expect more.